Well, welcome everyone. Hey, it's Chris and thanks so much for coming by. We're having a wonderful time here. We're going to be doing like a really fun holiday type painting where we're going to create um, a dinner table, a dining room uh, dinner table type setting. There's some turkey or some chicken here. We have uh, um, uh, so a few things, candles, a little bit of a um, flower arrangement on the right hand side that's kind of um, a little bit in the picture that we have here. We have a terrine. Maybe there's some soup in the terrine or some hot, uh, delicious food. And then we have a gravy boat here and a table. And we have some beautiful uh, swirling paint on this wall back here on the um, picture in the backdrop. So we have a lot of fun uh, working on this painting. So get ready, grab your brushes, your pencils. We're going to show you every step of the way how we're going to create this. And it's really fun. I taped around this border of this painting with some... Uh, artist tape so when you lift it off you have a nice border around this and then we at the end of the video we'll talk about how you can put some writing on this here to make it into an occasional card if you want to for a holiday so if you're having some holiday dinner with friends family you can make a card um, and uh, maybe you have a gift you know a nice card for someone that maybe is making a really beautiful dinner for you you can create a card for them saying thank you um, so we'll just have a wonderful time creating this painting here um, and again we'll do everything A to Z soup to nuts the drawing first, the composition first, and then we'll get into the painting and we'll show you all the colors we're going to use and um, how we're going to get to that end result of a beautiful occasional card here or just a simple painting if you want to as well. Okay, so we'll be right back in a second or two. All right, so we just saw the finished painting. We're getting started now. Let's uh, uh, keep going here. Let's, uh, we did, want it, we wanted to start out with a, um, I used a ruler for a straight edge along the bottom here for the table. So you can kind of see there's a really dark line here. Um, that's the uh, table. And we're doing, again, a Thanksgiving Day um, type of a scene here. Just a real simple a turkey, a tureen, a gravy boat, some candles, a little bit of leaf forms over here. There's maybe a, um, a vase and flowers and a, a nice uh, bouquet. Over to the right hand side but that's a little bit of out of uh, out of view over here on the right hand side but we do see a little bit of the leaf forms and things like that um, kind of um, coming into the uh, picture here but we wanted to just do this simple um, bit of uh, still life here for a beautiful Thanksgiving Day uh, table setting so we have the again we use the ruler here just to get the straight edge for this table across here so I got my straight edge for my tabletop there and then let's uh, start out with um, maybe the um, platter that the uh, turkey is on so I'll start off over here and I notice that the turkey is maybe about halfway across so about midway across the vertical so we have halfway across the picture about center is the right hand side of the turkey so we kind of know that we're going to have the platter coming across here and about halfway, which is about here. So I'm going to make the uh, bottom of the platter here like that. And then I'm going to go with the gravy boat up here. Okay, so I do my gravy boat there, my platters over here for the turkey. Then we're going to do the uh, tureen over here on the right hand side. Let's, um, let's get that in. And that starts about over here. Like this, and it comes in like this, and like this. OK, 
Okay, so that's our terrain there. And it comes across here like so. And then there's the lid on the top of the terrain. And there's the top of the terrain like that, so I think that looks pretty good there. Then let's get the candles in here. So I'm looking at the candles. There's two candles. The first candle over here is right at the edge of the terrain over here, so that we can kind of have an easy time locating and get we can get that situated there. Like that. And Let's just do the candle. What I have to do is let me move let me move this out of the way here. I'll move this up here. I'm going to need to uh, have my hand over here where the phone is. And uh, I'm just going to do... You know what? I'm going to use a ruler here. These candles are really, really beautifully straight. They're kind of... They get a little thinner at the top, so I'm going to make them a little thinner at the top like that. But they go up pretty high there. Like so. And if you if you have to, you can readjust it. I kind of think I went a little bit... I didn't get thin enough at the top there, like that. So I need to thin them down a little bit toward the center, or toward the top. There we go. Perfect. So we have the one candle there, like that. And then we're going to... We're going to say that the, okay, the terrain is a terrain here, then the gravy boat. Okay, so the other candle is about right here, where this gravy boat is. So what we're going to do is let's just, they're going to be the same height. So I'm going to make a, a line like that. And I think I'll start from here and then go down like this so that I can kind of match it with this, like that. So I'll keep these two the same. They look good. Like that. Like this. Like this. Like that. That looks pretty good. This candle's a little smaller. So I'm going to do this. Maybe I'll come over here. It's a little bit easier to see if I can take the ruler and go on the other side of the candle where I can see the other side of the candle. So I can see this line and then I can make that tapered a little wider at the bottom, a little thinner at the top. I hope you're... Uh, Kind of following along here. Oh, I hope you can see the details of this. But I guess what I was trying to show here is if you do the one line with the candle on this side, get that straight line, then you take your ruler and you kind of slide it all the way over this way and come over this way. Then you can kind of come over on the right side of the candle over here. Then you can see the angle better if you have your ruler on this side. Sometimes I tend to maybe just go here and then and then go fast and come over here next, but if you actually come all the way around this way and then come back this way, you can kind of see the the dimensions of the candle a little better. You can kind of see where it gets wider at the bottom. So it does taper thinner as it goes from the bottom of the candle holder up. So you can kind of see how it does thin, thin a little bit as it gets closer to the top. So that I think was in, kind of important to c capture. And uh, let's uh, let's work now on the turkey here. So um, there's some different kinds of things over here. These might be like tomatoes and turnips and uh, onions and things like that, where the turkey uh, platter is around the edges of the turkey platter. There's going to be some vegetables and delicious things like that. Then we're going to come up and do our turkey, and I think we're going to come up like this. that and then we're going to come over this way and do the thigh and that's about a little less than halfway 
like that. There might be the wing over here. And then over here we have the the drumstick over here. So some basic shapes here and there's going to be some lighter lights over here and there's going to be a little bit of a lighter light over here where you're going to see some highlights of light. So the light's coming from the left to the right. Perfect time to just take a break and um, make sure that we take our light insignia and put that on our tape over here and our little light insignia spotlight like this and all that does is really help us to just remember that the lights coming from this direction and going across this way so this way if we're in the middle of our painting or in the middle of our drawing if we have our light insignia here our spotlight insignia we can rest assured we don't have to really think about it too much. We can just keep our focus on our drawing and our painting. We can just look right away and go, oh, there it is. That is the spotlight insignia or the light insignia that we create to kind of let us know the light's coming from this way across the painting this way. That'll give us all the indications of where the light is going to be, which is on the left side of the subject matter. The turkey, the candles, the terrine, the gravy boat, the table. Anything else that's here in this picture, some flowers and um, leaf forms over here on the left, right-hand side. All these comp compositional parts of this painting, once we get our light insignia up here, we kind of know we're going to be keeping the lighter side of things on the left side and then the darker shadows uh, on the right side. That's all. Just a quick informational for ourselves. We put that, we put that there just helps us to remember to uh, stay on target with our um, lights and shadows. Not a problem. All right, let's uh, see. Let's get a little more of these leaf forms over here. And I think over here we might have... I want to even up this over here. Like that. There we go, much better. And uh, let's do some leaf forms over here. The leaf forms kind of start about here. And this is going to be some indications of. And that's all we wanted to do was just maybe have a couple of indications of some leaf forms over here. And I think kind of the um, the most interesting and more kind of the focal point is the turkey over here. But this this uh, terrine does look beautiful over here. So everything kind of looks really interesting here. And this is just like a perfect little bit of information for us that we know it's a beautiful Thanksgiving uh, dinner. This is the dining room table. We have all of our parts of our um, painting kind of in here, our composition. I think that's pretty good. We'll keep a very light, fresh looking, simple background here. It's going to be maybe a wall. We're inside of a dining room area. And uh, so we're not going to make much details on this wall here. We're just going to go with some simple information here and then we'll sort of call it a day, you know, for our composition here. All right. And uh, I don't think we'll get too fancy with the terrine. I think we're not going to put any um, uh, fancy details on the terrine. I think we'll just leave it a white terrine, plain white terrine. This is like a stainless steel um, or chrome gravy boat. We're going to leave that as it is. We're going to try to capture the, the um, chrome or stainless steel type look to that. 
over here on the according to the painting or to the photograph and then again the turkey over here that should be kind of simple we're going to use some um, light and shadow to um, pick up the uh, details of that turkey all right so i'm just going to take a quick break and we'll get right back uh, into it we'll start doing our painting actually next okay so i'll be right back Okay, we've got our pencil drawing done. Let's uh, we'll get started here with our um, painting. I'm using just a number four uh, Da Vinci travel brush, and it's a uh, sable hair brush, and um, holds good amount of water. And we have um, it's a number four again, and uh, this should be fine. I think we won't have to use maybe a larger brush until maybe the background. We might use a larger brush for the background on the the wall here in the uh, room, dining room, let's say, or kitchen. And uh, I'll use just some simple, fresh, clean water in a, a water container. And I usually keep a sponge next to my water container just to check off some water off the brush if I need to. Or I use some tissue. Usually I hold some tissue in my hand and I'll take off a little bit of water on my tissue if I need to. To keep uh, my brush a little drier than you might think. I Usually a real important part of watercolor is really controlling how much water is in your brush. So if you're rinsing off your brush, um, you're probably going to need to some point before you go into the paints or onto the paper, you're going to need to just touch down on a little bit of, again, sponge or paper towel or pa um, tissue first. And then what I do is I usually rinse off the brush, I check off a little bit of water, and then I come over to the colors here. And what I'll do is I'll pick up some of the color for the turkey. So I'll get some burnt umber and I'll get some raw umber too. So some raw umber, some burnt umber. Maybe I'm going to use a little bit of cerulean blue too uh, for some warm and cool kind of a feel. I don't want to go with just warm colors. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna too. So I think these colors are probably going to be good for this. Um, so I'll just pick up a little bit of everything here and... I'll start working in the the darker darks which are down here. Then I'll pick up a little bit of blue. I just want to do a little cerulean blue in there. And I try to look closely at the photograph I'm working from here just to get the details. And again, it's going to be darker on the this side over here and then over on the this side, the left side, you're going to have more, we'll have more light over here on this side. So... I'll rinse off the brush, dry off a little bit of water, then I'll try to do a little bit of that uh, light there, and the same thing over here. Then I'll dry off the brush, rinse it off, dry it off a little bit, the brush, and I'll just sort of very lightly fade that into the white paper. There's some really dark darks here. 
we're painting this a la prima. And then there's some greens here. This might be, there's some vegetables and things on here. So I'm going to put some of the vegetables there. And then there's something like a red. This might be like an onion. And so we're just, we're working on our turkey here. And uh, I think we're doing a good job here. We're sort of... And then again, some more green over here. There's some green vegetables and interesting things. I don't think we need to go too much detail with that. We'll have a little bit of red and green. And uh, get a little more water in my mix there and I'll just do a couple splashes like that. And a little bit of red in there, so there's some radishes and maybe some interesting onion things. So have fun with this, just make some interesting colors in there, and I think you'll be fine. Greens and a little bit of red, and um, I think this looks good. And then we will take some cerulean blue and just do. We will add just a little bit of um, blue on this side of the turkey over here. Just to sort of Get a little bit of um, color in the background there. And if you get a little bit of, um, you can blot up a little bit with a tissue or a paper towel. If some of the paint bleeds or something like that, if you're working in a section and you find that some of the colors start to like flow out into other areas, not a problem. You just blot up a little bit with a tissue very, very lightly and you'll notice it'll just probably resolve itself pretty easily. And uh, I'm just going to do a few more details over here, like that. And then I will use some more cerulean blue here with some French ultramarine blue. Maybe a little bit of raw umber too. And I'm going to try to get a little bit of some shadows on this. So I'm doing the gravy boat now. Maybe a little bit of a darker French ultramarine blue over here. That looks pretty good. A little bit of um, like a gold color. Could be like a raw sienna or a uh, burnt um, yellow ochre or raw sienna. Just a little bit there. And a little bit under there. And then I think there's some burnt sienna here, which I think is the table. So I'm going to use some straight burnt sienna for the table. It 
kind of like a mahogany color. Looks pretty good. And uh, I'll put a little bit of a ultramarine there. For, um, ultramarine violet and blue. We'll start to work some of the shadows of the uh, terrain over here. And that seems to just kind of blend in with the background over here. And then I think that's a little bit darker on top here. There's a little bit of a shadow under there, like so. And then a little more shadowing over here on the lid of the terrain. So what I'm trying to do is sort of blend in the background over here with the uh, terrain. And I try to smooth in a little bit of um, I just try to swirl the brush around a little bit to make some irregular washes, uh, wash shapes, let's say. try to go in and do a little bit of a darker purple and blue under here and I'll just try to keep working that wash around like that as well as over here I just try to swirl that into the background so that it kind of ties in later. We'll do some larger washes with a larger brush here. But I just want to kind of make sure I take this wash that I'm doing here and blend it into the background a little bit like that. So it ties in with everything. Okay, so we have um, a pretty good... feel here for the overall composition right now. Everything seems to be working good. We have light shadow working for us. And 
and then we can always go with a darker background. French ultramarine blue, raw umber, a little bit of uh, ultramarine violet. Rinse off the brush, dry off a little bit of the water, and uh, try to go in with a little bit of a darker wash over here. And a little bit of green and uh, red over here. Again, some more, maybe some radishes, interesting vegetables and things over here. Some green. And then some shadowing under here for the platter. Okay, and I think we should maybe take a break now. We'll let this dry a little bit, and then once we let this dry, we can do some of the green uh, leaf forms over here on the right. We can come down here and do the bottom of the table, the edge of the table here, and then maybe a little more background color. But I think we're actually almost finished here with this a real simple Thanksgiving Day type of feel. Uh, dining room table, Thanksgiving dinner, a turkey, some interesting vegetables and things like that. We have a um, gravy boat and a terrine over here on the right hand side. Beautiful setup here. We have some candles. So um, let's come right back, but we want to let this dry. So you can use a blow dryer if you want. And if you don't want to use the blow dryer, no big deal. Let it dry maybe like an hour. If you come back in one hour, it should be dry enough that you can continue working on this. So I will probably use a, a blow dryer quick and I can come back and keep working. All right, so I'll be right back. All right, let's get started again here. So let's get some greens over here. We're gonna do some green, raw umber, green, sap green. And uh, let's see if we can get some, just some simple looking leaf forms over here, maybe even some um, cadmium uh, yellow lemon to get a little bit of a different green so we have some different greens here let's use some sap green then some sap green mixed with some cadmium yellow lemon so I'll do some mixtures here of the different greens uh, maybe some straight some straight sap green there like that maybe another bit of sap straight sap green there and then maybe a little bit of some splashing so I'll pick up some A little bit of splashing to uh, get some variety going. A little bit of a uh, chromium of oxide.
for a few of the leaf forms over here, like this. I think that's fine, just that little bit of leaf forms to uh, give us an idea of some flowers and an arrangement, floral arrangement on the table over on this side, on the right hand side. And uh, what else? Let's see here. Hmm. Let's get our candles. Those candles look like some burnt sienna. So I'm going to do a careful, a little bit at a time, just a little very, very fine line of uh, burnt sienna along the right hand side of the candle here. And then right away I want to dampen my brush, rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water on a paper towel or tissue and then I just want to kind of blend that over to the left side of the candle like that and then the same thing over here right side we do the darker line shadow side and I really try to be careful with this these candles are very very you have, we have to be careful with that we don't want to try to go too fast and then we go off of our lines if you wanted to even put some masking tape over your candle areas and mask use some artist tape or masking tape and tape both sides of your candles if you if you feel like you might go off the lines a little bit but I'm just keeping my hand resting really tight on the table that I'm working on and then I'm just holding my hand super tight on the table almost like my t like like my hand is bolted down to the table and then I'm just going a little bit at a time like a half an inch or a quarter of an inch at a time and then I move my hand a little bit almost like painstakingly very carefully just so I can keep that light and shadow, the shadow on the right and the light side on the left. And then we can even go back and get some more darker paint to go over on the right hand side one more time. Just like that, maybe in a few spots. Same thing over here. And again, my hand is really almost like it's bolted down or glued down to the table. I'm not um, I'm making sure my hand is super, I'm really like, my. I'm pressing a lot of weight on my hand on the table and then just like holding the brush a little bit and going on the, on the uh, candle portion here, like that. And then I can get a little bit of blue and purple mixed to get a darker dark and we'll do the top of the the wick of the candle like that like this too there and I think we're we're almost uh, completed I think uh, the only thing we maybe let's take a larger brush so what I'll do is I'll I'll come over to my um, over here and I'll I'll find a little bit of a larger brush this might be like a uh, eight a size eight um, watercolor brush, round brush. I'll get some more fresh clean water. I'll come over here and I'll get some mixture of French ultramarine blue, uh, cerulean blue, and there was a little bit of the um, leftover ultramarine violet. And then what I'll do is I'll come up here and just start up this way and just swirl around the paint. I just want to get a little bit of a feeling of some wash on the paper, just like this. And I would just have fun with this and just kind of swirl the brush around. Almost like, you know, how when the um, painters come in and they do a really beautiful um, faux finish on the, uh, or a, like a very, um, like a uh, 
swirling finish on the paint or they might do a couple layers of paint on the wall so that you have like a beautiful three-dimensional looking wall versus just straight paint. You have some swirls and things to give it some texture and that's what we're going to do here and I think that's all we needed to do was just add that little bit of texture and if you want to add a few more spots here to tie it in and you can always make it a little darker along the bottom here to kind of just make it more the focal point of the painting is along the bottom here of the painting where all the interesting subject matter is. We have the candles and the turkey and so you can sort of keep your darker washes on the bottom here. And I also wanted to mention too, let's add a little bit of shadow to our um, candles, to the candle holders. So I'll just take some more blue, purple, a little bit of the uh, yellow and green golden green just like a little bit of a bluish cool color and we'll just put a little bit of a cool a little bit of a cool um, effect on the uh, chrome here I think it looks like it's a chrome candle holder chrome or silver like that and you can even pick up some darker darks and just to get a little more and you can even do a little more shadowing effects if you want underneath the uh, the terrain here. Same with over here. But I think that looks pretty good. You can always make this into a card. So if you wanted to uh, make a card, you would leave it just like this and then you would, once we're finished, you can take some very light pencil lines with a ruler and then you would take some light very very super light pencil lines or you might not even have to use any pencil lines you might just hold your ruler on your paper and then you could write a message like happy thanksgiving like that you know happy up there then come down here and say thanksgiving down here with some uh, brush strokes or a pencil or a marker or a pen when it dries so if when your wash is dry on your painting you can do magic marker um, pencil, pen, you can do some writing on here. Happy Thanksgiving. You can make this, you can make this into a card, um, maybe for someone for Thanksgiving. And um, I think one more thing we'll, we'll do here is I think I'll make a darker wash under this table here. But I, you know what? I think I might not go as dark as the painting here, but I will take some French ultramarine blue. Her, uh, French ultra, uh, I mean ult ultramarine violet, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt sienna, and I'll just do a little bit of a a uh, wash under here, and I'll leave a little bit of that highlight on the bit of the table there. If you can see that, I left that little bit of white highlight there. I'll get a little more burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and I might just do a little darker dark there. And then I'll come across here with a lighter wash and just go across there like that. And then one more blend there across, we'll just blend that in together. 
And I think that's fine. I think that looks good. And you'll notice when we lift up the tape that it's going to look really, really sharp. And uh, the overall effect is going to be really beautiful, sort of like, um, like a frame around the painting when we lift off the tape. So that's why the tape is so important if you're going to do a card like a um, Happy Thanksgiving Day card, or if you're just going to make this into a painting. It's really fantastic if you can put on that tape. We're going to let this dry just a few minutes. I sometimes will do this here. I just kind of lift up a little bit of the watercolors, washes along the edges of the tape. But I think that's fine. But I'm going to let this dry just a few minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll peel off the tape. We'll see how it looks, but I think so far this does look pretty good overall. And it's just a loose representation of what we're seeing here in the photograph. Um, we're not really trying to get every little bit of detail or anything like that. We're just trying to capture the overall essence of what we're seeing here. And I think we did a good job of it, so good work. We're going to um, peel off the tape in just a second just to see how it's going to look when we frame it out with that really nice... Um, lifting off of the tape and we'll have white paper underneath kind of as a border. Let's see how that looks in just a second. We'll come right back. Well, we're finishing up here. Let's take a quick look. Now we've seen that we've... worked from our photograph here, so maybe I can put this on the, here. This close up will give you the more or less the photograph we worked from there. So you can kind of see that's the, the photograph that we worked from a little closer. I'm always trying to kind of give everyone a better look at things if I can. If I can do some close-ups, I, I always try to do that. Um, you let me know how that works out in the uh, comments section if you are happy and pleased that we can get some more close-ups like this here. Sometimes I get a little bit uh, nervous when I'm changing my camera. Um, zoom because sometimes if I change the zoom on my camera it goes out of focus and then that can really be a real hassle because then you're going to be seeing like a blurry picture. So I don't want to have you seeing a blurry picture at all whenever I can help it. But that's zooming in a little bit. I'll move this over this way here and then I'll lift up the paper and try to lift up the palette off the table and then I can move this up a little bit like this. Okay, so that's a little better there. I can zoom back out a little bit. So that's kind of how it looks zoomed out. And then we can lift off the tape. And this is in a portrait format, as you can see. So the paper is uh, upright versus in a landscape. Uh, or, uh, Let's see if I can. So I'm just lifting off the tape. There we go. And you can kind of see how it looks close up. And I'll even zoom in a little more here. Like that. And you could always turn this into a landscape uh, mode. For your paper so this could be like you know your landscape kind of mode if you're zooming in like this like that but we did do it in a portrait format like this but both ways will work fine you you are the artist you'll figure out how you want to set up your paper and your um if you're going to be doing this for a card, like let's say an occasional card for a holiday, Thanksgiving of course, or Christmas, uh, or any holiday that you might have where you have some really beautiful foods and things out on a table and you want to do like this still life kind of a feel, absolutely have a great time with it, enjoy, take photographs of your own. You can do photographs um, uh, with your iPhones, your iPads, um, or if you have a small camera. You can do all those things and then save them and then you can actually use your own photographs. Something similar to this, but maybe your own personal touch on things, you know, with your own table setup. If you have a table at your home or, or if you're at traveling or uh, with family and friends and things like that, you can do your own photographs and then reuse those photographs and work from those and create your own paintings from that. But I did find this on Google. I just Google searched, um, I think, like a... a I think I typed in turkey 
uh, turkey dinner photos or something like that, and I found some really good pictures. So I hope you enjoyed this. We had a lot of fun. I can't wait to work again with you. I know everyone's doing a great job out there, and I'm really happy that all of you are really enjoying the painting process, the drawing and painting and watercolor. Um, so we'll get together very soon, and uh, we'll see you uh, on the next video.